Hello everyone and welcome to a showcase of uh, my space setup over here. So um, this is just your usual solar panel uh, system but there's a little more into it. Um, the main thing that I've got going on over here is um, the rockets. So I can make them land when there is no meteor showers so that uh, the walls uh, can, can be uh, made uh, not out of uh, bunker tiles except for these so all of those over here can be made out of uh, normal tiles because no meteors will enter in the, the silo so um yeah and i am here to uh, show this to you and um, all the laggy automation behind it so um let's get uh, started so first we will look at the um, solar array over here. Well, not the solar panels, but um, the space scanners. So, this is a system designed by uh, Roguhari. I, I'm sorry if I butchered the name. Um, so, what it does is it pulses scanners based on this clock over here. And if I make it go faster. Yeah, so it pulses the scanner, and when the scanners um, will detect meteor showers, uh, because I have six and that their scan quality is 100% when the doors here are open, um, well, uh, they detect it in uh, about eight seconds because of this clock over here. So we keep that signal for 200 seconds here, and here it's 10. And then, um, we just uh, wait for 154 seconds because 40 seconds for the bunker doors approximately and then 8 for this so that's my that that will open the doors and i've got a little more domation here than him because i want to unpower the doors and uh, yeah i want to to shut off the power over here with this power shut off um, sometime after a meteor shower started, so 100 seconds I think, and um, 300 seconds after it uh, has ended. So basically I'll show you all the timings, 154, 200, 8, 4, here is 10, this is 200, 100, and 100. Um, here it's... Uh, it's to pulse the doors over here on and off to destroy all the regolith. So 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, and 80. And these are Xord gates, um, yeah, to pulse. And um, also, as you might see over here, I have some uh, wires going down. So this right here detects when there is, um, it's a peace season. So in the game, I'm now here on the wiki, um, as you can see over here, there are times where Meteor, uh, we are, we know that they won't fall. So for example, that's the, the peace season. So the peace season lasts four cycles or 200 and, uh, 2400 seconds. Um, yeah, let's use the seconds over here because it's more precise. So. Um, here is the pattern in which they occur and um, that la a whole cycle of this lasts 40, uh, uh, 34 cycles. I can detect the peace season when uh, the, the time between two meteor showers is over um, 1200 because the calm periods in for example these seasons over here or last uh, for 1200 seconds and when it's over that it's in the 200 uh, 2400 seconds so how did i get to this result for this clock over here which is at uh, 600 uh, and 18.9 to detect when um it's longer than uh, it's a when it's a peace season the water which is pumped over here uh, because it's a water clock um needs to be split in half so if this pumps one kilogram per second that's me that means that i need 600 over here but because of the accuracy of this clock i need to put it at 
599.9, right? But then I start the clock and this door is open. So I need to close it and then start, which means I need to remove four seconds because this door takes four seconds to close. And then I need to take the accuracy of uh, the, the scanner network over here, which is 200 minus 154, uh, which means it's 46. And then 46 divided by two because it's two tiles makes 618.9. Okay, but now I will unpower the scanners over here for um, the rest of um, the peace season. So I need to take, um, yeah, I need to remove 1,200. One um, I need, yeah, I need to remove 618.9. So we'll say 620 from um one uh, 2400 seconds because that's that's how long the peace season lasts and then i need to remove four seconds because of this and um i need to um remove uh 200 seconds approximately because of the scanner network over here so that i power it in time and um here is the automation so it's quite simple um also this here should be connected like so but i don't have it since when i'll copy it in the world it'll be better if i just connect it later and then surprisingly that's all there is to this system over here except i wanted to show you this so this is for the telescope over here um, it's 40 seconds um, connected directly to the bunker doors and a not gate after that to open the doors when the doors are closed over here and then 40 seconds after they open uh, this uh, closes and the duplicates can go on here so um, all the pathfinding is done via ladders over here in this part and um, yeah note I don't have a, um, a battery setup uh right now but that's quite simple to do and if you want to offload the power from your batteries there's just a control battery um which is connected to a transformer with some automation uh, right now what uh, is powering everything is um those ancient steam turbines over here so they were the ones um in the the alpha of the game so yeah, as you can see, this building has been deprecated and cannot be built. So I just use it because it produces uh, 2 kilowatts of power, which is the max a conductive wire can take. And they are quite easy to set up. You just put some steam below and uh, add in a gigantic number, uh, number of pressure. Yeah, so as you can see, that amount of tons. And it doesn't go down. And behind it is just void. So it's a really easy way to set up and power everything. So now, how can I achieve my goal of launching the rockets when it's uh, when there, I'm sure there are no meteor showers? Well, I know that it's only in the peace seasons that there are absolutely no um, meteor showers, which means that I can uh, only launch the rockets when it's a peace season. But then, how do I know it's a peace season? Well, I can know it's a peace season using this system right here. So, this will um, take the output from the detector over here, not the the, the thing that makes uh, that for the scanners to, to automate it properly. Um, so, this is just detecting when there is a, a, a peace season. And then, because a peace season lasts for 2,400 seconds, I can go over here, and because this detects almost right in time, yeah, uh, because this detects um, right in time with that, so um, I just lengthen the output over here, 
um, using this right here uh, it needs to 2400 minus the delay of this clock um, minus four seconds for that which gives us this result right here so then what I can do is detect when it's the longest um, a period where there might be meteors swirling. So, how do I know that? Well, it's quite simple. Um, here, the longest season lasts for 10 cycles. And I know that if it's shorter than 10, or longer than 7, that it's uh, this season right here. So, so then, what I do is just plug it in, in here. So that's um, for some tiles over here. Uh, I did it with debug mode. And um, this will um, detect when it's the correct time. And with all the, um, the timings and uh, restrictions for the space array over here. So um, yeah, and so, so the math behind it is uh, is quite simple really um, so that's set I at the 731.9 and that's minus the door the uncertainties of the scanner and uh, everything then I um, lengthen the pulse so that it goes up to um, 10 cycles and that's a uh, real 10 cycles so this detects it if it's longer than 7 I add some time to make it um, go to um, 10 cycles. And then this clock over here detects if it's longer than 7 cycles. And if it is, with all the uncertainties of uh, the scanner network over here, then it'll send a pulse up to here. So yeah, look at the automation to copy it. This is set at 5 seconds. So it'll, this should be deactivated. Um, yeah, it's just that right now for demonstration purposes, it's like that. And um, so yeah, uh, this will detect when it's longer than seven. And then to synchronize a big clock over here of 34 cycles, like I said, um, I can uh, just lengthen the signal over here um, This should also be connected and um, with this sensor right here, so uh, 241.9 and this at 731.9 Okay, so this is all calculated using uh, with uh, the, the timing of the door closing and everything so um, yeah uh, the door closing is four seconds so then it'll synchronize with this clock over here. So this is a big clock for 34 cycles. And what it does is um, it just counts 40, uh, 34 cycles. So when it arrives at um, the end, it resets. So in this clock of 34 cycles over here, what you want to have is um, uh, all the timings, you need to test them in debug mode first by uh, spawning in some water over here and then testing uh, to which sensor it goes and then removing 8 to um, this number over here and uh, point 0.1 to the last one and point 0.1 to, yeah, to, to all of it um, because of the accuracy so um, yeah what you need to to have then is all your sensors over here so say for example this one this one is at 591.9 so that's for 600 i think um this is to count two cycles for i don't know which rocket over here um we'll, we'll discover that so then you want to send it through a knot connected to an AND gate. This will send a short pulse. So as you can see, a short pulse. And you want to connect um, all, uh, because you, you need three sensors per um, rocket because there are uh, three piece seasons. And then to make it uh, uh, um, arrive during a piece season, 
um, you need uh, three sensors and I'll show you a spreadsheet um, to what timing you need to put those and you need to test it in debug mode first um, by spawning in some water. So then I connect all of the outputs. So this one, for example, is connected here. It's also connected here and over here. So this is quite compact. I spent a lot of time on it. And then you want to send it through a literal system like this. So this is the opening uh, in which you can launch a rocket. So um, mine is set to that. I'll show you the spreadsheet so that you can know what number you need to put this at. And then you just take the output from over here and send it to your rocket. So this, for example, was for um, the rocket that's going to go all the way to um, this planet over here. So the temporal tear. But before that, you need some more clocks because you want it all automated. So this one over here is set at um, the, the valves are set at 100 gram, grams per second. Uh, we don't care in this case about accuracy. So this first one over here is started um, when the rocket launches. So I'll show you it in a bit. So this is the signal that the rocket launches um, to launch the rocket. And this one here um, uh, is for the replenishment rate of um, the planet. So this one, for example, uh, is replenished at 55.6 kilograms per cycle. So you, you need to check the number of cargo bays you have and the, the, the can contain 1,000, 1 tons um, of resources. So you make that times the number of cargo bay you have. And then you need to divide it by um, this number over here, which and the, that will uh, determine how much, uh, si how many cycles um, you need uh, to wait before it's all replenished. And then you do that times uh, 600 and you uh, round up the number to a somewhat reasonable number. Um, so yeah, you, you round it up and you divide it by uh, 100 uh, because of this over here um, so that the clock isn't a uh, huge and yeah. So uh, for this one though, um, it's the time the rocket takes to go to the planet and come back um, minus. So this one, for example, is uh, 54 cycles. So you wait for about, um, I don't know, uh, 53.5 cycles. That times 600 divided by um, 100 uh, because of the valve. And uh, there you go. That's uh, what you set the sensor over here. Also, I forgot to connect the power to this. I, I'll do it later. Um, and then uh, this sends a signal to um, to launch the rocket. So when it has all replenished, um, this is the clock for the replenishment. This is for um, launching, uh, opening the doors when it's about to land. So you send it through here to an end gate. Uh, connected to that so when it's the time uh, at which a rocket can launch to arrive at a peak season you combine it with uh, this signal over here and um, then you send it through another end gate um, which is for the common capsule so when it's uh, all good to go um, you uh, go you make it through go through an end gate then to another end gate so that it only launches when there's no meteor shower so that these doors are open so you, you make it through that another end gate and now here you might ask the question why are there two not gates over here well it's to con not confuse the signals i have two over here so this is a buffer of 200 seconds um, that it needs to that the doors needs to need to stay open after this has detected and then to not gates so that it doesn't interfere in here because 
I am taking the signal from uh, over here. So because of that, and I'm also taking the signal from over here. So because of that, I need to make sure I isolate my signal pr properly. So this is to launch the rocket and it resets the clocks so that we need to count again. And this here is to refuel the rocket because after the doors have opened, I need to fuel the rocket again. So it goes down here and into uh, a filter of five seconds and uh, XOR gate, which then feeds into a memory toggle um, with a sensor, um, a liquid pipe element sensor uh, set on um, a line of either um, liquid oxygen or hydrogen, which I've got in the background over here. It's It, it detects when um, this is full, because if it's full, because the pipe is going over um, the input, it'll just overflow and go over here. And when it detects, I say, no, you stop sending um, to these shutoffs over here because I have got a loop there, which is all in vacuum. So there's no problem about that. Um, that ch there shouldn't be any temperature ex exchanges. So um, yeah, anyways. Um, so that's what I've got for the rockets. Now I'm going to uh, show you guys the spreadsheet I have um, for the timings for this um, all, all of those hydro sensors over here. So let's check it out there. So I will uh, share this spreadsheet in the description. So what I've got going on here is um, these are the meter cycles that uh, occur. And here I've got the whole meteor cycles, and this is the time frame in which the rocket needs to arrive because of the precision over here. I've got it for all the rocket uh, destinations. Uh, so this is the number of cycles the rockets uh, the rocket takes to go um, to 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 launch, and then when it arrives. And um, yeah, so what you want to look at here is um, this number or, or those numbers. So let's say I have a rocket going off to uh, 70,000 kilometers. Well, I want my hydro, uh, my hydro sensor to be set at um, 22 cycles because it's 20 new, 22 cycles in uh, the 34 that I need to launch times 600 because it's uh, I need to count in seconds. Yeah, it's just the conversion and then you type 20 uh, it's 22 times um, 600 and then you put um, you, you need to test it in debug mode first obviously um, so you you, plug, you put it down over here like that you, you just paint it and then let it go rise and when it's at the correct number um, so let's say it's this one I don't have any rockets going to 700, uh, uh, seven, uh, 70,000 kilometers. And then you let it rise, okay? When it's at, um, uh, when it has stabilized down here, um, you just plop a hydro sensor where the water level is at. You read here uh, the pressure, you rem remove 0.1, and then you remove 8 because the time this door takes to close and open each time the clocks re the clock restarts so um yeah that, that's the procedure you need to to get um to to achieve all of those numbers so for example this one needs to count for two cycles i need to redo all of this because i think i'm wrong and this too um, yeah. So, but I, I've I've still explained uh, what the basics are and how you need to do the automation. Um, so yeah, this needs to count for let's say um, two cycles. So that's two times six hundred. You also um, and as you can see, it's divided by two because there are two tiles each time, and you need to make sure in debug mode you paint it first because um, water accumulates in a weird way. Uh, weird way so as you can see down here um, in my water I have over 1,000 kilograms so it's not perfectly 1,000 kilograms per tile at the top it is 
it's uh, this is uh, 990 yeah 1000 kilograms but you still need to test it just to make sure so then i removed 0.1 to 600 so 599.9 and then i removed 8 so 591.9 and yeah that's the procedure and then you make it go through all of this automation over here connect it um to connect all the outputs for one rocket uh, that's quite important so you, you can just connect those three uh, those three together it won't work um yeah and you need to connect it at the end over here and it's all the outputs you have for one rocket and then you connect them all together uh, go make them go through this and then you it's just the, the usual automation setup over here uh, this one is a little different because i have um solar panels over here i don't want to interrupt um so yeah so um that's how the system works um yeah i think it's quite special and that no one has done it before i saturnus has done a clock like this but um at, in the end he found out it uh, his clock didn't work so i got on uh, this idea and um yeah i think this one you, you don't need to reset if you want to well you just gotta disconnect that and uh, make this go through and also when this clock is started um yeah to reset it you you just need to flip this switch um so that's i think that that's all i needed to say about this system it's not that complicated if you understand it so um yeah i think that i've explained it quite well if you have any comments um tell me uh, tell them to me in the in the comment section and um also i'll include the spreadsheet in the, the description i hope i remember and if not just tell me again the also this will be posted on the forums um so that i don't need to write a huge text about it because it won't be that interesting and um yeah so that's about the system this i many people should have uh, watched uh, rugo uh, rugo hari's video sorry if i butchered the name um yeah so and i'll include uh, the link to his video too in the description uh, i just added some things over here and this and um yeah i think that's going to be it for um, this showcase i hope that you enjoyed it again any questions and if you see any flaws in the system just tell me um yeah so i, I hope that you enjoyed and um I'll see you guys um, in another in another video. Also, again, I will um, make this in my playthrough. And so, if you see anything, just tell me any questions about it. Tell me, no problem. Uh, I will try to respond to them uh, as quickly as I can. So, anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed, and um, thanks for watching. Bye bye.